my name is Bruce Day, as already has been stated. I uh, should tell you a little bit about myself before I get to the presentation about being safe in Winnipeg, personal safety. So just to start with, um, I have lived in Winnipeg my whole life. I was born and raised here. Um, however, I've done a lot of traveling and I've been to over 40 different countries in my lifetime and I'm still traveling. Um, and I, I go to uh, some countries and talk about to the police services there. I'm a retired police officer with the city of Winnipeg. Uh, so, so I just talk about leadership in policing, but in this case, um, I worked in Winnipeg uh, to over 20 years and so I know a lot about this city and I just want to say this at the beginning and that is um, every city in the world has places in it where you don't go there. When your friends come to visit you, you say to them, don't go there. You can go anywhere else, but don't go there. Every city has that, um, and it's usually at nighttime. And um, so that is why Winnipeg, along with most major cities in Canada, that'd be like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, those cities, Winnipeg, uh, Calgary, Edmonton, though they have more police officers on the street between 10 at night and 2 in the morning. 10 at night and 2 in the morning. That's what is called prime crime time. And uh, so I'm suggesting to you, I'm saying to you, that it's pretty much, pretty well, it's safe to move around Winnipeg, anywhere in Winnipeg. But between 10 and 2 in the morning, um, some places in Winnipeg, it's not very comfortable. In the suburbs, like outside of the city, no problem. You can go out at 2 in the morning and, and go for a walk if you want. Uh, but in the city part, no, not so much. Um, it's not a good idea. Just like everywhere else in the world, don't sit there today and say, oh my goodness, Winnipeg is not safe. Think about your home city where you originally came from. And then the other thing I want to say is 97% of the people in the world are nice people, just like you. But there's that 3%. That 3% that's the reason we have police around for those 3% of people that are not nice people. These are the people that rob you, beat you up, steal things, those kinds of people. That's the 3%. And so we have to have the police around. And just so you're comfortable with thinking about police, because I know in some of your countries, some, not all, the police are not looked on with uh, good feelings. They're, they're not respected. They're, they're feared. Um, in Canada, in Winnipeg, the police can be approached anytime and you can talk to them. The police here operate on uh, the fact that they get paid a very good salary, a lot of money. They don't need any extra money. They have plenty of money. And they've got <coughs> extra uh, benefits uh, that the average person at the average job doesn't get. Well, why? Well, because the police do a job that no one else wants to do. And I'm not standing up here today to talk about the police. I'm just getting you comfortable with the thinking that when you see the police, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to think, oh no, I, the police stopped me, now what? And uh, so it's not like that. So keep that in mind. And um, you just need to know that um, if you uh, run into a problem, if you have an emergency, you can call 911. 
that's the emergency number and you know this. So when you do that, it doesn't cost you any money. It's free. You just go call 911. The police come. They deal with the issue. It doesn't cost you any money. Of course, you pay taxes like I do and everyone else, and that tax money goes, some of it goes towards the police part. So that's where the police fit in here. So think about it that way. And um, the other thing I want to say is just like everywhere else, in the world if you are walking around your city like this you might have a problem why because you're not being alert you're not paying attention you're not looking around you are just focused on you and the ground you're not seeing what's coming towards you. You're not hearing what's coming up behind you. You're not with your peripheral or your side vision, you're not seeing these things that are coming towards you. And so you don't have the opportunity to avoid a bad situation because you didn't know it was coming. Because you're doing this. Not good. Not good. So what I'm saying to you is much better to have your head up and walk and look around. That's all. That's all you have to do. And you can see way ahead. This is the way the military and the police are trained when they go to school. They, when they start on the job, they're trained to look ahead, see what's coming, see what's happening two blocks, three blocks ahead. You see a guy standing in a doorway three blocks ahead. You see a car coming out of a driveway two blocks ahead. You, you see all these things. Now, I'm not trying to train you as police officers. I'm just saying, just keep your head up so you can see, you know, 20 yards in front of you, 20 meters in front of you, um, so that you can pay attention. So that's what I'm, I'm talking about. And um, so... I, um, I want to also say that we're going to talk about uh, being safe or being um, comfortable in your home, your apartment, the car, the bus, and walking. So in your home or apartment, like you either live in an apartment or you live in a private home. It's one or the other. So when you're in an apartment, you know there's only one door one door out and one door in. You don't have much choice if something happens, right? In a house, you've got lots of choices. You've got the back door, the front door, the side doors, the windows. You can get out, get in, those places. So all I'm saying is if you're um, home in your house or apartment by yourself, that is alone, you have to think differently. Then, if you're there with your brother, your husband, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your niece, your... If when, you, when you have the family over, it's different. Then, if someone knocks on the door, you can go to the door and say, Yes, can I help you? Well, because you've got your whole family there. It's safe. I'm talking about when you're by yourself. Everybody's gone to work. The kids are in school. You're home alone, and someone knocks on the door. Now, listen, you can just stand there and be quiet. Let them keep knocking, ringing the doorbell, and they'll go away if you don't answer the door. So just, I'm just talking about when you're alone. And a lot of what I will be talking about today is when you're alone, when you're shopping by yourself, when you're on the bus by yourself, when you're walking by yourself, and when you're in your home by yourself. So that's the uh, important thing to remember here because the odds, the chances of something bad happening increase when you're by yourself. So that's what I'm trying to point out to you. So okay, that's fine. So you're home by yourself and 
and you have to think a little bit differently and you have to be a little more careful. But one of the issues with uh, your home or your apartment is you have a telephone. Now, a telephone can be a cell phone or it can be a landline plugged into the wall. Either one doesn't matter and it's good. Phones are good. If you want to get a hold of someone, if you want to call someone, if you want the police to come or the fire truck or the ambulance, great to have a phone. 911, bang, and you got them. But here's the other thing. When you have a phone, you can get involved in something called fraud. I wondered, I was looking for my, uh, my little card here and I can't find it. Um, and fraud is just a lie. It's someone trying to get money from you for free. In other words, they want you to give them money. And then uh, when they do that, uh, you lose. <laughs> you gave them money, but you get nothing in return. That's what fraud is. So, for example, your phone might ring, hello, and then the person on the other end might say, this is the uh, Bank of Montreal, this is the Toronto Dominion Bank, or this is the credit union. Um, you have an account with us and we're having a problem with your account. Could you give us your, your account number, please? What is that? Fraud. It's a lie. No bank, no credit union ever calls you and asks for your account number. They will send you a letter and say, come in, but they won't they won't phone you and ask for personal information. It just doesn't happen like that. So that's a fraud. Whenever you pick up the phone, when it rings and you pick it up and you hear this word, when you hear the word congratulations, when you hear that word, hang up. Right away. Hang up. It's bad news. I don't care what they say. Congratulations, you've won free tickets to Hawaii for two weeks, all expenses paid, you and your family, wow! Just send us the tax part and then we'll send you the ticket. Listen, spare yourself. As soon as you hear the word congratulations, hang up. It's not worth your time. It's a waste of time and you don't want to get involved. The other, the other point uh, that I want to make about the phone is when you hear the phone ring and you pick it up and there's silence and you say hello silence hello and then you hear a click and then a voice comes on a recorded voice whenever you hear that silence hang up it's not worth your time it's not going to be anything that's going to help you it's probably going to waste a lot of your time and maybe just cause you a big problem. So you pick up the phone, hello, hello, uh, and then avoid, click, hang it up. Don't waste your time. It's, it's going to be something that you don't need to hear. So put it that way. The, um, there are many other methods that people use to try and get you to spend money. But a lot of it is about this word called greed. G-R-E-E-D. Greed is something we all have a little bit of in us. And that is just this. We're going to get something for nothing. We are going to give you $100 free. You're thinking, because you have a little tiny bit of greed inside of you, like I do, like everybody does, wow, $100 for free? Boy, tell me more. <laughs> no, it's hang up. If it sounds too good, it is too good. Keep that in mind. Okay, so that's, that's the phone thing. The other issue with the phone is sometimes... Um, Let's say you owe your friend some money and you haven't paid him or her. And they're phoning you and say, hey, when do I get my money? Oh, just wait, ne next week, next week. But you said that last week that you would give me the money this week. 
no, no, but, but I, I'm short. I'm short this week. Could you just wait? You see, when you get that kind of a call, it will be someone that you know, someone that you borrowed money from. They lent you some money. They gave you some money. said, I will pay you back with interest, but you didn't. So now they're calling you and they're saying, I want my money. Now, that's one kind of call that you don't want to get. You don't want to keep getting that call. And sometimes it could be an ex-boyfriend, could be an ex-girlfriend who's angry and they're going to phone you at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Your phone is going to keep ringing and they're going to start shouting and swearing in the phone. I want my money! <laughs> or, I hate you! Why did you do this? Those kind of calls. You know what I'm talking about here? Yeah, people get angry. Well, okay, those are what are called uh, annoying, uh, harassing, uh, obscene. Annoying, harassing, obscene phone calls. Now, they're not dangerous. It's just that they happen and you don't want to hear it and they keep calling you. The police can get involved. They don't want to, that kind of thing. They don't want to, but they can. And what they ask you to do is to record 10 times that you've got these calls. So you were called at 2 o'clock in the morning and the person said this. You were called at 3 o'clock in the morning and the person said this. When you get 10 of those, then you can call the police and say, I'm getting annoying phone calls and I want them to stop. The police will say, do you have 10 recorded conversations? By recorded, I mean you just wrote it down on a piece of paper. You say yes. They will send a car and take a report. And then they'll trace the number and go and speak to the person. That's one thing. Second thing, you might just get a call where the person is past being annoyed. They are way past that. I'm going to kill you. That's how bad they are. They are really mad. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your whole family. Now, when you hear those words, it's against the law. The Criminal Code of Canada says you cannot threaten to kill someone on the phone or face to face. You can't do that. Now, here's where the, the little difficult part comes in. If you think that that person is capable, is willing, can actually come over and kill you, you should call the police. You call, hang up, call 911. I just had someone call me and say they were going to kill me. 90% of the time, you know who it is. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, people don't just call you on a whim just for fun and say, I'm going to kill you. It's someone that you've made angry. And I don't know what the reason is. I've only mentioned a few. Money, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, those kinds of things. Uh, maybe you hurt their child or something. I don't know what it would be, but these people get angry. So angry they utter those words. So if you think they're going to actually do that, then you call the police. When the police show up at your home, the first thing they're going to say is, do you think that person could do this? Do you think that person actually would come and try to kill you? Now, if you say, absolutely, he, this guy's crazy. He's going to kill me. I believe he, could, he would do it. Okay, they will go and arrest him. Now, here's the other issue. You know in Canada, we bend over backwards to make sure the system is fair. So when they get to this guy's house, what is he going to say? Not me. I never said those things. No way. I didn't say that. You say, yes, he did. Well, she said, he said, nothing's going to happen. If you have proof, oh, oh, evidence, oh my goodness. If you have, what kind of evidence? Well, your friend overheard him say that. That's one. Two, you have a voice mail system. When someone calls and leaves a message on your machine, that's really good. You 
can play that back for the police. That's all it takes, under arrest, going to jail. But without that, I don't know how you're going. See, what the police will do is they'll take the report, then they'll go and talk to your friend. But they won't arrest him. No way, because he's going to say, I did not say that. And you have no proof that he did, just your words. But ladies and gentlemen, you know and I know that people lie. People don't tell the truth. You don't, I don't. It depends if we're getting in trouble. If we're getting in trouble, oh no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, no, nope, no. Nope. So here's, that's what I'm talking about here. So that's why I'm talking about this phone thing and these threats, they have to be backed up with evidence. So that's the phone. Now if you don't want someone to call you and give you uh, trouble at two o'clock in the morning, when that phone keeps ringing, when that phone keeps ringing, um, you could get one of these from the dollar store. What is this? A whistle. So when that phone rings for the tenth time at two o'clock in the morning, you can pick that up and you hear them screaming again. <laughs> you can just blow into that whistle and they'll go, oh, oh, and they won't call you again. Okay, that's the phone. Let's leave that alone. Okay, so just want to talk a little bit about um, your car. Now, I understand that many of you don't own a car. Listen, a car, they're expensive. I mean, insurance, new tires, oil changes. It just goes on and on and on. It costs a lot of money to run gasoline, to run a car. I get that. But some of you have a car, some of you will have a car at some point for your time here in Canada because this is a big place and it's hard to get around. You don't just decide one day, I'm going to go to British Columbia and visit my friend. It's going to take you two and a half days by car to get to British Columbia. That's what I'm saying. So sure, you can take a bus, you can take a train, you can take a plane. But my point is, I want to talk about cars in general. And that's just this. When you get into your car to leave for the day, make sure your doors are locked. A lot of cars, most cars today, when you put the car in drive and drive away, the doors automatically lock. And that's a good thing. Because what happens here, sometimes, and I know it's happened because I've been involved, in the summer, you drive up to the red light, you're waiting for the green light and all of a sudden the door opens and a drunk guy gets in and he says give me your money or drive me to the liquor store one of those and then whoa you can take your seatbelt off and jump out of the car and leave him in the car and let auto pack look after everything or if you have your child in the car you're not going to get out you're going to stay in the car and probably do what the guy says. But to avoid all that, you keep the doors locked. And you hear someone pulling on your door, you look over and there's the guy and he's pulling on, he can't get in. The light's red, you just drive, make sure it's safe and go through the red light. I don't care about cameras and everything else. It's an emergency. You can go through a red light as long as it's safe to do so. In other words, if there's cars coming like this, you can't go. So anyway, I'm just pointing out that keeping your doors locked is a good idea when you're driving your car. What happens in Winnipeg is what happens in every country in the world. Drivers, people that drive these cars, they get angry. They get road rage. They get upset because they think you cut them off. You did something they didn't like. So now they're going to drive up behind you and they're going to start beeping their horn and they're going to start shaking their fist and you're looking in your, your mirror and you're seeing this guy. He's crazy, but he's right up behind your bumper. He's really close. He's doing that on purpose, he's trying to frighten you, trying to scare you. So my suggestion is you pick up, uh, I don't know, your shoe, your hairbrush, or if you have a phone, 
pick that up to your ear and do this. What does this guy think when he sees you doing this? You're calling 911. That's what he thinks. Does he want that? No way. Next thing that'll happen, he'll drive by you, beep his horn, shake his head, but he will go. He will go. The last thing these road rage people want is for someone to get their license plate number and description. Like it was a man, he had this kind of hair, and this is his license plate number. Okay, now we're talking. But I also know if this is happening to you, you get upset. You get panicky. You get nervous. You get excited. You, uh, you're not happy about this. And you forget all about what we just said just now. Get the license plate number. You won't do it. You'll be so, oh, 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 what should I do? Where should I go? So you can pull over to the side of the road and let the guy go. But if he pulls in behind you, ah, you don't want to deal with this person. Pull back out onto the road and keep going. And now you go where there's lights and people. So you go to a 7-Eleven, a gas station, a fire station, any one of those places. Just drive on and start beeping your horn. There's people all around. They'll come. They'll, well, what's, what's going on? But that guy, when he sees that, he takes off. He does not want a witness, doesn't want someone to see who he is or what his license plate number is. I'm giving you some ideas of things you could do if somebody is doing this to you, pulling up behind you and shaking their fist and beeping their horn and all that kind of stuff. Because you know what? It's not a nice thing and you don't want to deal with that. It's not something you have to deal with, so just avoid that pull in somewhere where there's lights and people, or pretend you're using your phone to call the police. Listen, if you want to call the police, call them. 911, hello. Um, I know it's illegal to drive your car and talk on the phone, but this guy's going to kill me. I don't know what his problem is. He's angry, and I need help. And they'll say, where are you? What is your location? Now, now you're, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm on Portage. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, there's the street there. Victor. Portage and Victor. They'll send a car. It's not a big deal. They'll send a, they'll send a car. But that guy behind you, when he sees that, he's, he's gone. He is not going to hang around. Okay, so keep that in mind. Enough said about that. The other thing about the car is when you go shopping to uh, uh, Superstore, Walmart, um, I don't know, wherever you like to go shopping, um, and you go there and it's nighttime and you're coming out to your car and you have your packages but you probably have your keys in your hand I hope you do I hope you have your keys in your hand so that when you get to the car you can press the button or unlock the car and get in don't get to your car and start looking in your purse where, where did I I don't know where they are. Don't do that. Before you leave the store, have the keys in your hand. But as you're walking towards your car, you might see a guy standing beside your car. Whoa! Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, go back. Go back in the store. Talk to those security guys. Say, excuse me. Uh, I want to go to my car, but there's a man standing by my car, and I'm afraid. No problem. I'll come with you. You see, those security guys are bored. <laughs> they have nothing to do. They just walk around endlessly in that mall, and they would love to get outside. <laughs> so tell them it doesn't cost you a penny because they get paid. They're already paid. You don't have to give them any money. They will walk to your car, get in your car, roll the window down this far and say, thank you, roll up the window and leave. It's no problem. So you can do that. If there's no security guy, just go to a clerk. Go to a person standing at the information desk. I don't know, anybody that works there. 
in a grocery store, it could be the, the, t the cashier, anybody, and just say, excuse me, I want to go to my car, but there's a, a man standing there, and I'm worried about it. And, and they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll get Fred. Fred will help you. Hey, Fred, hey, come here. Do you want to go with this lady to her car? Yeah, 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 sure. He'll go, and he'll walk with you and say, okay, have a nice evening. You don't have to pay him any money. He gets paid already. Okay, so think about that. And I'm talking here. You notice I'm talking about when you're by yourself. If you've got your Uncle Fred, your Aunt Julie, and your cousin Benny, you got all these people, with, don't worry about it, just go to your car. That guy doesn't care because there's too many of you. Uh, but when you've got your little child and it's just you, then you want to go back in and ask them to give you a hand. And they'll, they'll do it. This is Canada. Everybody helps everybody, right? Well, we hope so. Uh, it's not always right. Um, so my point is... Um, that's the way to make sure that, <clears throat> that you stay safe and that nothing happens. Okay, so that's a little bit about the car thing. The bus. I know that you, some of you take the bus. I take the bus from time to time. What I'm getting at is when you get on the bus, don't go to the very back of the bus. I know there's no seats here and there's seats back there. You see, sometimes these people go to the back of the bus. They don't stay at the front. They go to the back. And I don't want to say there could be a problem, but there could be a problem. Um, if you go to the back of the bus and then, now, oh, now this guy's bothering you and now what? So all I'm saying is stay in the middle or at the front of the bus. And if you have to talk to the driver, Talk to the driver. He's in charge. Just walk up and say, excuse me, but there's a drunk man and he's bothering me. And the driver has a speaker phone here and a button. He just pushes it and it says Winnipeg Police. He doesn't have to take, he just, <laughs> Winnipeg Police. Okay, uh, yeah, we have a drunk on the bus. Uh, could you send a car? Yes, where are you? Uh, Portage in Arlington. Okay, just wait there. We'll be there. I have done this many times. So you pull up in your police car, you get out, you say, hey, buddy, come with me. Take him, put him in the car, close the door. Everybody is happy except that guy. Because <laughs> he's going to the drunk tanks. You don't know where those are, I hope. Okay, good, because we have them for drunk people in public. Okay, so that's the thing about the bus, but there's more about this bus thing. You know what? When it's after 7 p.m., after 7 o'clock at night, you can ask the bus driver to stop right at your street. He doesn't have to stop at the bus st sign. He can stop, uh, excuse me, driver, uh, one block ahead is Victor. I live at Portage and Victor. Could you stop at Victor? Cert he'll look, he'll go, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, if it's after 7. PM. He'll just stop the bus, open the doors, you get off and walk right down your street. That's it. That's, the, that's how the policy works. So anyway, you can do that anytime. The other issue is at night, when you're by yourself and you're getting off the bus, get off at the front. When you're getting off at the front, look at the back doors. And if you see two big guys, and they're looking at you, and you're looking at them, <laughs> uh, step back and say, uh, driver, I'm going to wait one more stop. You, you can let them off. <laughs> They'll get off, you go one more stop, and then you get off. Now, when you're walking down your street at night by yourself, if you're alert, if you're paying attention, and if you're careful, uh, you might hear, you pay attention, listen, you look, oh, there's those two guys. Oh, cross the street. Walk there. They cross the street. <laughs> now you have a problem. <laughs> so, what do you do? You look for a house that has the lights on inside. The lights on inside, run to the door. 
pound on the door and yell, fire, <laughs> not help, fire, F-I-R-E. You see, people in this country pay attention to that word. They don't pay attention very much to H-E-L-P, help. But fire, yes. If you really want to yell help, go ahead, but yell fire with it. Fire, help, help, fire. They will come to the door. They will open the door and say, where's the fire? And you say, there's no fire. It's these guys. Call the police. They'll be very happy to help you because there's no fire. And their stuff is safe, which is what they're really interested in. So you can do that. So you can pound on doors with lights on. People come and because you yelled fire. Anyway, so that's that part. And that's about that bus. Now, walking, here's the thing. In uh, Winnipeg, especially in the summer, when you're walking down the street, well, I know it happens in the winter too, but we have these people called panhandlers. Now, in your home country, they're called beggars. Beggars need help, you should help them. Panhandlers don't need help. You should not give them money. That's the, that's the bottom line. So panhandlers, same as beggars, they're out there, could you give me, I'm hungry, could you, I need some money for coffee, could I have money for the bus? I... Don't do it, because that money goes where? For alcohol, or for drugs, one or the other. Uh, I, uh, I told you I, I worked in Winnipeg as a police officer for 20 years. Listen, I used to follow these guys just to see what they did. When, they, when some nice person gave them $5, $10, $20, you wouldn't believe the money people give to these panhandlers. What do they do? They don't go to the restaurant. They go to the liquor store. I followed them. I haven't seen one in my whole 20 years go into a restaurant. Never. So I'm just letting you know this. And on top of that, we have agencies here in Winnipeg. I believe there's 18 agencies, 18 places where these people can go to get free clothes, a free shower, a free bed, and breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All free. No cost. So why are you giving them money? You shouldn't. Okay, so here's the deal. I know it's easy for me to stand up here and say to you, oh, Bruce, uh, good for you, but yeah, we're out there and we're by ourselves and then these guys, two, three of them, they come around and what are we supposed to do? They won't leave unless we give them some money. So here's my suggestion. So I'm going to get, uh, could I get you to stand here? And could I ask you to stand beside him? You two are going to be... Yeah, you two stand beside each other. So you here, that's good, uh, face me. Okay. And if you could stand beside him, thanks very much. And you're my panhandlers. Okay. So here's the thing. You come towards me now with your hand out. So keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You can sit down. Okay. I know there's lots of things they can do to stop that, stop you from getting away, but that's why I'm emphasizing you have to do this quickly. You can't keep the same pace. Like if you walk like this, they're going to be right back around in front of you. You have to take five seconds and walk fast. I know you can do it. It's, you have the ability to walk quickly if you have to. So. The thing is, you have said no, thank you. No, we know what that means. Guess what? They know what that means. So that's the first word, no. Thank you, you've been polite. You haven't said, hey, get a job. You didn't do that. You just said, no, thank you. You didn't look in their eyes. You looked away. You said, no, thank you. You stepped around. You step past, and then you move quickly, just for five seconds. Bam! Done. They're not going to chase you. One, they're probably drunk, 
or unsteady on their feet, or you are just moving too fast. And here's the other thing. Who's coming towards you? More people. They want to ask them. They're not going to ask you because you said no already. No, thank you. It's, it's a bit of psychology and it's a bit of energy. So you just have to say that. No, thank you. Move around and walk quickly and then slow down and walk the way you always walk. It'll be no problem. So that's my recommendation for dealing with panhandlers. But here's what happens. You know that Winnipeg has something called bus shelters. So here's the bus stop. Here's the shelter. It's 30 below. The wind is howling and the snow is falling. You want to get into the bus shelter to wait for your bus. So you go in and you walk. Don't go to the back of the bus shelter. If you're back here and those two big guys come in, you can't get away. There's no way to get around them. So what you do is you open the door, you step in, step to the side. That's it. This is your spot. This is the door. This is you. When they open the door to come in, you step out. They come in, you step out. And that way you can avoid getting cornered, getting trapped at the back of the bus shelter where you're, oh no, now what? Um, is it illegal for them to panhandle at the bus shelter? Yes. Do they pay attention to that? No. Does anybody care? Not really. So it's up to you. So it's just that thing of, no thank you, step around, move around, and away you go. Yeah, you can do it. It's not that hard. The other thing I see from time to time, newcomers to Canada, is they go over and they stand by themselves, by the, by the wall of a building like this. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's usually like this. First, you can't see what's coming. Second, you're by yourself. Panhandlers want to talk to people by themselves. So you go and stand under the bus sign, just stand there with all the other people. You don't have to talk. Just stand there. They don't come there because there's all these people, too many people. So that's one other way to avoid them coming towards you. All right, so that's the bus shelter. Something just popped into my head that I meant to tell you about the telephone and if I forget it again I will be I won't be happy so I'll tell you it uh, before I forget this phone thing 911 when you need the police and you're at home at two o'clock in the morning and you hear a loud noise you think someone's breaking in you call 911 you don't have to talk you can call 911 and hang up Okay, as soon as you do that, in the police communication center, on the screen comes the name of the owner and the telephone number, right away. So as soon as you hang up, it becomes a priority one unknown. So the, the dispatcher doesn't know who called, doesn't know why the person called, they can see the name, but they don't know why you called, but they will immediately call you back. That phone will ring again. Now, you can pick it up, you can start talking, but here's the issue. They're going to ask you 14 questions. Now, are you comfortable with understanding what they're saying and them understanding what you're saying? Maybe you might not be. So, you don't have to talk. Just leave it. Let it ring. If you want the police to come just a tiny bit faster, you can pick it up and say one word, help, then hang up. It'll ring again as soon as you hang up. But in the, in the computer, in the police car, it'll say, caller called back and said help. Oh, okay. Put on the red lights, put on the siren, and away we go. So um, when the police come to your door, when you've called 911, they will knock on the door and say Winnipeg Police. You could use uh, this little thing, this little peephole. 
But usually the police stand off to the side. They don't want anyone to see who's there. Anyway, forget about that. When the police come to your door and say, Winnipeg Police, you can open the door and say, Oh, I'm so sorry, officers. My little boy accidentally dialed 911. He was playing with the phone, and he must have dialed that. There, there's no problem here. Are the police going to go away? No. Are the police going to come into your apartment, into your house, and search your apartment, and search your house? Yes. If you say, no, you can't come in, are they still going to come in? Yes. So I'm just letting you know that's the law. Once you called, and it was you who dialed 911, no one out, maybe your little boy did, but too bad, once the police get there, they are not going away until they look under the beds, in the closets, in every room in the house, in the basement, up in the attic, they're going to check the whole house to make sure you're safe. Why? Because people lie. People come to the door and say, yeah, everything's fine, officer, there's no problem here. And if those police officers walk away, when there's a dead guy in the back bedroom, they're going to be charged for neglect of duty. No, they are going to come in. I don't care how honest you are. We don't know everybody in the world. The police don't. They don't know you. You could be the most honest person in the world. You've never told a lie in your whole life. But the police don't know that. But anyway, that's what I'm saying, is once that number's dialed, 911, and I might as well say, while I'm standing here in front of you, that the domestic violence unit, if you dial 911 for that, yes, they are definitely coming in. <laughs> and they are going to deal with the situation. And uh, there will probably be an arrest. So I'm just keeping you aware of that. You can, you can keep that in your head for t when we get the question time after. So that's that part. Um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget that. So we talked about walking. And uh, one other thing when you're walking uh, in Winnipeg, if you see something ahead, like a block ahead or two blocks that you see, like, what's going on there? It looks like a teenagers, drunks, I don't know, downtown, pushing, shouting, laughing. Don't, don't do this. Don't, like, w what are you doing? W what's happening? Don't do that. Because they're going to look at you and they're going to say, What's your problem? Me? I don't have a problem. Um, so that's what I'm saying. When you're by yourself, you probably should go across the street and then continue when you're by yourself. It would be better because there's 10 of them, one of you. They're probably, they've been drinking or if they're teenagers, they're trying to impress their friends and how tough they can be. I don't know what the psychology is in that. But I'm just saying, you know, better to just cross the street when the light changes to walk and then continue on. If you're with your friend, if there's two of you, I'm suggesting just keep walking, but don't look over there. Look there and just walk down the street. And just avoid, don't bother looking. That's it. That's because you were alert, paying attention, and looking around. You saw this coming. You knew it was coming. You were not doing this because you're going to get into a problem. That's downtown here mostly. So um, thinking about that, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about purses and backpacks. Purses and backpacks. What do you think of that purse? There's a nice purse. No, I'm not selling it. I'm going to keep it. I like this purse. It was my wife's. <laughs> is my wife's. Anyway, so walking down the street like this is not good. Walking down the street like this is not good. Walking down the street like this, this is good. <laughs> because you know what? These people, they're watching for these people. That's what they're watching. They're, if they see you like this, 
They're not coming near you because guess what? You look after your things. They can see that. And you're going to give them a real struggle if they try to get your purse. And they know it. And they don't want a lot of people in their, in their face when they try to steal your purse. So you're like this, you're good. No problem. Okay, so that's, that, that's the purse thing. We're going to talk more about this. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, yeah. So the backpack thing is, you know, sometimes we carry our um, laptops in here. And we got our backpack on. So walking down like this, eh, gone. So if you're walking down the street like this, you're good. They, they see that you have your hand on this thing, and it's not going anywhere. It's like that. If you've got both straps on, even better. I don't carry that. I always carry it just on one shoulder. I can get it off easy, and, but that's just me. Anyway, so that's that thing. So I want to talk to you a little bit about when you go to the Tim Hortons to have a cup of coffee with your friend because you want to talk about your day at the school. You want to say, tell uh, your friend about how great the teachers are at this school that you're going to. So you walk into the coffee shop and you get your coffee and you put your stuff on there and then you sit down and you talk to your friend. And when you're talking, you're looking at them in the eye because that's polite. We don't talk to our friends and say, oh, I wonder who else is here. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's fine, yeah. Uh, we don't do that. That's rude. What's polite is to pay attention when your friend is talking. When you're paying attention, the guy behind you, one of these guys, he is sitting there takes that purse, puts it under his jacket, and walks right by you. And you don't even see him, because he's got it under his jacket, and your purse is gone with all of your identification. Never mind your money, all your ID, which is a real hassle to replace, as you may have guessed. I mean, getting that new medical card, getting that new driver's license, getting, oh, it's just a pain. It takes a long time. It's very expensive. You'll get it. It'll just take you, I don't even want to guess how long it's going to take you. Not as long as uh, getting your uh, citizenship papers. That takes longer. Uh, so what I'm saying is that is one thing. When you go into the coffee shop, you could do this. Because your chair has legs, you see, you have legs. And the chair has legs. You could put your purse or your backpack like that. It's not going to go anywhere. You can just keep it there. It's all safe. Doesn't matter what that guy does, those are staying. If you happen to be in a chair that doesn't have legs, like it's bolted into the wall, you could do this. <laughs> because you have legs. Not going to go anywhere. And everything is safe. Now, I have talked to some people, and they have said, Bruce, not everybody does that. Okay, fine. Uh, some women have told me that they put their purse here, their arms here, and they drink their tea or their coffee, and they talk to their friends. That's good. That's great if you do that. That's great. And the same with this. But just don't walk in, and I see people, they just, and they start visiting. Because those things are going to go missing downtown. That's going to happen. Now, here's the thing. It's one thing to lose your purse or your backpack, but it's another thing when you lose all of your identification. So here's my suggestion to you. You go to any library in Winnipeg, and there's lots of them, the main library and all the suburbs have libraries. Go in there, there's a photocopier, 25 cents. Take your wallet out, take your purse out, get your 
credit cards, lay them on the screen, get your medical card, lay it on the screen, driver's license on the screen, close it, put the money in, get a photocopy of all of your cards with all of the numbers, fold it up, take it home, and put it somewhere safe in your home. Now you have something. If those other cards go missing, if you lose them, at least you have that you can refer to. You can take it out and go, oh, well, I can phone the Bank of Montreal. Here's, here's the credit card number. I can just phone them. Here's my, and my, my medical card. And uh, it's perfect because you have everything listed. Passports. When my wife and I travel, I told you I've been to over 40 countries, we carry a separate piece of paper with a picture, a photocopy of our passport. With Yes, the picture's in black and white, but all of those secret numbers that are in the middle of your, of your uh, passport are there, and they can be seen. So if you are in a foreign country, maybe your home country, and you lose your passport, someone steals it, you lose it, I don't know what happens, but when you go to the consulate, when you go to the embassy, wherever it is you go, and you walk in and you say, I'm sorry, um, I've, I've lost my passport. They look at you like, sure you did. And it's going to be a long, not day, it's going to be a long month before you get another one. So, so what I'm saying is if you can pull out of your pocket, but I have a photocopy. Oh, well now we can help you. We've got all the numbers, all the codes, everything's there. Yes, we can give you a hand and we'll get it much quicker because you have that with you. So the other issue is when you go places, sometimes the person behind the counter says, oh, you'll have to leave your passport here. You're very unsure if you should do that. You know, should I, yeah, yeah you're renting this car, you're renting this motor scooter, you're, I don't know what it is, but they'll ask, can I, could you leave your passport? Give them the photocopy. Here's a photocopy. They'll be happy with that. You keep the original. <laughs> don't hand that over. Just give them a photocopy. It's all good. Okay, so that's that idea of photocopying things and get it. You can do it at any library and it's all good. So um, I just want to talk a minute about ATM machines. ATM machines. When you go to the ATM machine, because you are alert, paying attention, looking around, you know, you see nobody standing, wipe this out. <whistles> oh, what's your PIN number? No, you're not going to go there if there's a guy standing there, no. But most of the time that doesn't happen. You just go, you wait your turn, you go in, you put your card in, you get your $20, you get your card back, you get your receipt back, you put it in your purse, you put them in your pocket, then you turn and leave. Okay? Don't do this kind of stuff. Okay, let's see here. I've got 5, 10, 20. Would you do that at home, in your home country? No, you don't do it here because these guys are watching to see if you have money. You can't say, I don't have any money. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying, just to be a little more careful of our, around the ATMs, because, you know, that we have had some robberies, especially at night when you're going to use it to get, to get something. You don't, if there's two guys standing a half a block away and they're watching you, I would say don't go there because they're waiting for you to get that money. Then they're going to do something you don't like. So I'm just saying to be more careful and pay attention. But if there's a couple of you, eh, it's not a problem, okay? So I talked about fire before. I just want to cover a little bit about fire. Now here's the thing. If you have a small fire in your home on the stove, like oil catches on fire and it's a small fire, or inside the oven, a small fire. I know it's scary, I know it's unsettling, but you know, you have to think a little bit. You can't just run around, oh, there's a fire, there's a fire. That's not going to do anything. Um, so, usually, 
you will hear that, right? Because somebody burnt something. The husband was making supper and he burnt everything. That's what it is. Hear that smoke. But what I'm getting at is you can use something like this if there's a small fire. A fire extinguisher. Well, I know you know that word, and I know you've seen these around. This is from my home. This is $25 at Canadian Tire. So it looks complicated. It's not. Pull the pin and squeeze it. That's it. At the base of the fire, not in the fire. At the base, the bottom of the fire, it's out. But I can already imagine that some of you are thinking, Bruce, I am not spending $25 on one of these things. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste my money. I'm going to spend 88 cents on baking soda at Superstore. 88 cents. $25. 88 cents. So, same properties, same, almost the same effect, but it will smother the flames. Will it make a mess? Yes. Will your house burn down? No. So it's a good thing. You can use this stuff. Plus, big bonus, when you pull the top off, you put that in your fridge, it absorbs odors from your fridge. Garlic, fish, the odors go into the baking soda. And uh, my wife keeps one in the fridge all the time. And uh, even the washing machine, sometimes you get mold. Well, mold. I don't know if it's mold, but it smells in there. You take some of this, you shake that into the washing machine, and it absorbs the odor from that if it's sitting there for a long time. So anyway, 88 cents uh, might have gone up to 98 cents by now. But uh, you could get it at any grocery store. Okay, um, if, the, um, if you do hear this uh, <whistles> terrible sound at 2 o'clock in the morning, most of the time you won't, but your children will. Or the, oh, you probably don't have dogs. I don't have dogs. But my point is, if you hear that noise in the middle of the night, you should practice with your children uh, two times a year, every six months. What happens to smoke and fire is it goes up, right? Heat and smoke rise. Down there at the floor, it's, you can breathe. You should be leaving your apartment or your house like this with your children. You should, tr you should practice that with your children at, because if this happens at night, you're not going to see anything, and that smoke is going to make it worse. The fire doesn't kill you. It's the smoke that gets into your lungs that kills you. When you're down there, there's not very much smoke. Up here, there's a lot of smoke. I know. I've been there. So I'm just saying that um, that would be a good idea to practice with your children. It's also a good idea to have a flashlight by your bed that you can just grab it at night or if the power goes out. Now I know I've been in some of your countries where the power is out a lot and for a long time. Uh, but in uh, Canada, in Winnipeg, you know, five minutes or an hour at the most, it, your power will be back on. It doesn't happen very much where the power goes off. It's not that we don't have the power, we have it. We just, somebody's done something and disconnected something. So all I'm saying is a flashlight is good to have around your house. And uh, also, I should mention this, for your stove, a small fire, you could, when you walk in the kitchen, go, oh my goodness, there's a fire. What should I do? What should I do? Run into the bedroom, grab a blanket, that's this, Run over here, and when the stove is there and there's a small fire, you could take this and smother the flames. Yes, it will ruin the blanket. No, it will not ruin your house or your apartment. It won't burn down. You will put the fire out with this. 
you'll have to throw this away because you burnt it, but who cares? It's only one blanket. You didn't wreck your whole place. Okay, so you got that idea, and that again is for a small, I'll use the word containable fire, something that you can work with. If it's like this, you got to get on that phone and dial 911 and say, we have a fire. <laughs> and they'll send the fire trucks. And again, they'll have your address already. Someone has, uh, has asked me before about police, fire, and ambulance, 911. So they're all connected. So when you call 911 and you don't say anything, it's just the police. That's who comes. If you say, we have a fire and hang up, they will send the fire trucks. If you say, my husband or my wife just had a heart attack or just cut themselves or, I don't know, they're laying on the floor, they will send an ambulance. The next question is, Bruce, how much does an ambulance cost? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So here's the thing. F um, police and fire, no charge, no cost. <laughs> ambulance? If they come, no charge. If they look at you and they say, uh, you'll be fine, no charge. If they say, we want you to come to the hospital and you get in the car in there and you go, now you get the big bill, <laughs> 400 bucks. Yeah, it's uh, if you go. If you don't go with them, you say, no, no, my wife will drive me. I'll, I'll be okay. Yes, sir, but you're almost dead. No, no, my wife will drive me. <laughs> I'd rather die than pay $400. <laughs> you could do that. So I'm just letting you know about the costs of things. Like I've told you, mostly everything I've talked about is free. But not that ambulance. If you get in it and you go, you're paying. No way out. Okay, so that's that part. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing about... Uh, should I mention this? This is a little thing that... You, you ever heard of the word Velcro? Yeah. So of course, this is Velcro. So I have seen, I see all the time because I do the grocery shopping now because I'm retired from the police service. So I have time, apparently. Uh, so I do the grocery shopping. So I watch some women, they come, in, the, the purse, it sits in the shopping cart, just right there. And, and they just go and they, they go, oh, I'm gonna buy some cereal and some, some soup and, coffee and and the purse is sitting there the whole time you see these guys they watch for that purse just sitting there it's got money in it it's got credit cards it's got lots of good things in it so I have said to my wife a good idea is to take that strap on that purse wrap it around that piece on the uh, on the shopping cart and then it's not going anywhere 25 cents at Walmart and uh, you could get a piece of this I did uh, just as one added thing does anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to ask about the things that I've just talked about anything on your mind I uh, talked about a lot of different things and I just wanted to make sure so my talk is done, but we have a handout for you, so don't leave without the hand, handout. Thank you very much.